Hello, everybody, and God bless you, and welcome back to the fueling station. I'm so happy to be here on today, and I'm excited about getting started. We're getting ready to wrap up on our series that we've been uh, ministering on, and it has been truly a blessing. Where is the water? Where is the water, which symbolizes the presence of the Lord, and we're about to see the rain come down. I know that you are excited about this series. Before we get started, uh, I want to remind you to set your alarms because we are here Monday through Fridays at 1030 a.m. Uh, and also on Sundays, we come and minister at 230 p.m. So if you know that there is someone out there that is in dire need of the word of God or they just love to feast on the word of God, I hope and pray to God that you would invite them and let them know that we are on the air. Amen. So grab your Bibles and let us go into the word of God. We uh, stopped on yesterday uh, talking about Elijah calling on the name of the Lord and the Lord answered by the fire. He poured down his fire. The fire licked up the water. The sacrifice burnt the rocks and everything. And the people saw it and they knew that he was the only true and living God. And we talked about how we are definitely in a season where there is a battle between the gods and everything that the devil is trying to do, it won't work because he is the God. When the people saw the power of the holy God, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the God of Israel, what was, what was Elijah doing when he called on the name of uh, the God of Israel? He was trying to remind them that they initially started out with this God who was his God. And even though they have come to a place that they forgot, Elijah did not call on a God that they were not familiar with. He just reminded them of their first love. And because God knew that we need a personal encounter with him, he came and he answered them by the fire. That is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to have the presence of the spirit. Where is the water? The water represents the presence of the Lord. And because Elijah had the presence of God, he was able to introduce or reintroduce the children of Israel back to the God that gave them a powerful drink of his presence and in the presence of God, we know that we will be fulfilled and we will be restored and everything that the enemy took from us, it has to be given back. And then when we get the presence of God, then we will see the power of God and whatever we're believing God for, well, in this story, they needed the fire or they needed the rain. Remember, they were in a drought and they needed the rain. So after God demonstrated his power through the fire and showed you who showed them who he was, now he is going to answer them. You know, we know that God is going to show up and show out, but the enemy will always try to resist God, you know, even though he answered by fire, now Elijah is on Mount Carmel and he is calling on God in a birthing position that God will perform the rain, send the rain after three and a half years of no rain, after three and a half years of the land being in drought and devastation. Elijah is asking God to send the rain. But again, the enemy will always oppose what God is going to do. And that is where we have to stand on our faith and be committed to God because God is committed to us. We have to remember who we serve. We have to remember that God is never going to fail, has never failed, can't fail, won't fail. That's not his MO. So once Elijah sent his servant, to go look for uh, in the cloud a hand to see if the rain was coming, that was nothing that happened. The servant came back to Elijah and said, there is nothing. But Elijah sent him back and he told him to look again. He sent him back seven times to go and to look again. 
I need you to understand to see what God wants to do in this hour and in your lives. We're going to have to be persistent. We're going to have to continue to be powerful in our faith. We cannot let what we see or what we don't see cause us to move and waver. Amen. But we have to be willing to go and look again. And so the servant had to go and do it seven times and do it again. And the Bible said they that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. You know what? There are a lot of people that don't obtain the promise of God because they didn't want to go do it again. And so I'm here to challenge you on today. If you have waited on God with and, and, and you've gone through the motions of uh, uh, bringing down the presence of God, evoking the presence of God. And if God has sent the fire or the power of the Holy Spirit as a release, and now you're looking for the answer to come forth, God is not a man that he should lie. I want you to wait on him. I want you to not waver. I want you to be persistent. Be like that widow that kept going before the judge and she began, she continued to pray and she continued to uh, prevail before the, the judge. And the judge knew that this woman was not going to give up. And when we will not give up, God is going to send forth the answer. And so I want to pick back up on uh, this story. Okay. Verse number four, 41 says, and Elijah said to Ahab, get you up and eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And so Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went to the top of, of, uh, Carmel and he cast himself down, uh, to the earth and he put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arise a little cloud out on, uh, out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariots and get down the rain that the rain stopped you not. So basically, Elijah doesn't need to see something big as the servant goes up and he sees the, the a little cloud that comes up out of the sea. Elijah said, I'll take it. You know, God will take whatever we have that is not that much. If we could have a, a little bit of faith, uh, the size of a mustard seed, and we can have confidence in knowing that God will use small things. He took the widow's might, and he said that was more than everybody else. You know, there are a lot of people that will despise small beginnings, not realizing that God is going to take that little bitty hand that is in the sky that came up out of the sea. And out of that, well, there's going to be an abundance of rain. Think about Jesus. He said, unless a seed, which is very little, falls into the ground and dies, seeds have to die in the earth, and then they come back and produce more than one seed. And so inside of you, there is a seed of faith. Inside of you, there is something that is so small that God is wanting to accomplish something so big. And I just need the Holy Spirit to quicken us, to fulfill everything that God has in store for us. And it will start with something as small as a little bitty hand that has come up out of the sea. See, when this servant went seven times, that means sometimes we have to just keep on practicing whatever it is that we are believing God for. We have to have faith day after day, minute by minute, and know that God is going to perform it. And when God sees us actively going, when he sees us actively doing the thing that he has called us to do, 
then he is going to perform it. See, the thing is, we have people walking around here and they are calling forth those things that it's not even the will of God, but it was the will of God that the children of Israel see the power of God. It was the will of God that God was going to bring the rain so that they would know that he was the, the Lord. And I need you to understand that we have to partner with God. We have to find out what is the heart of God for this generation. What can I accomplish that is already the will of God? You know, we are sowing the word of God into the homes of the people. And if God puts it on your heart to sow to help us to bring the word of God, well, it might look small to you, but I'm here today to tell you a seed is always going to be small. And whatever you do, God is going to multiply it if it's done in faith. And so Elijah was like, I will take that little hand that you see. Now go and, and, and he said, go tell Ahab that there is getting ready to be a lot of rain. So you need to get where you need to be because the rain is coming. He knew that that was a sign for an outpour. My God, my God, I hope and pray to God that you will see the abundance of rain coming as you pursue God. And I hope and, and, and pray that you will have the faith and confidence that God is going to perform everything that he said that he is going to perform. I pray to you or over you today and speak a life over whatever you are believing God for. I call it forth and I strengthen you in faith. I hope and pray that you will be encouraged. I pray that the spirit of God will blow on the very thing that God has spoken. Whatever you are believing God for, whatever the enemy has tried to withhold from you in the name of Jesus, I pray and prophesy that you go look again in faith. And if you have to go seven times, go seven times and believe that it is so, and it is going to be performed because the name of the Lord is on the line and he will not lie to you or me or any of his children. So let's go back. And it came to pass that at the seventh time, he said, behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. You know, a little hand is big in the sky. It may be big to you, but it, uh, it, uh, it, with everything around it, it's small. You know, what we consider small, it's based on whatever is around us. You know, it's small because you're looking at it in a big old world. You're looking at yourself as a grasshopper as opposed to what? The giants that are in the land. But if you understand that whatever is considered small in another circumstance is considered big. Whatever is considered like it's not a lot, it's considered a lot to other people. So what you may be looking at is all I have is this. Well, I want you to know that there are some people that are out there don't even have a roof over their heads. I want you to know that most people don't even have legs to walk. Some people don't have legs to walk. Some people don't have everything that you have. And so what seems like is insignificant, what seems like it's not enough to give God praise and thanks about, I want you to know somebody would desire to have the little bit that you have. And if you could begin to look at it again and begin to give God praise, even for the struggle that you're in, because the struggle tells me that I'm coming through, you know, like that butterfly when he's in that cocoon, if he doesn't go through that struggle, he would never fly as a butterfly. It is in the struggle that he gains strength and all of the strength and all of the juices is pushed into the wings 
And that is what causes him to break out of that cocoon. And that is what causes him to be able to get his wings. So I want you to thank God for the struggle, because if that butterfly don't make it through the struggle, he would never fly. And I want you to know also that some of the things that you have been through, because I was just thinking about this the other day, you know, uh, I, you could have never told me in a million years that the things that I was going through was going to be the very thing that helped me and make me and shape me into the woman of God that I am today. And I need you to know that the struggle is going to play its part. All of the things that the enemy is doing to you, he cannot define you. He cannot stop you because God is going to take those things and he's going to use your struggle. He's going to use the things that you have been with, uh, been through. That is the reason why the enemy is trying to kill you before you can even come through the struggle because he knows that if you get through the struggle by the grace of God and by the spirit of God, he knows that you're going to be a threat to the kingdom of God. So don't you let the devil tell you no lie. Don't you believe all of the lies of the enemy that you're insignificant and none of this is worth anything. You know, I ask the Holy Spirit, I say, God, if I have to go through this, I pray that you would use it for your glory. So we have to go through things. God allows us to go through the fiery furnace and the fire is refining our faith, it's refining, refining our gifts, our talents, and our walk with the Lord. And he never told us it was going to be easy. God calls us to a high call. Anything is easy. Nobody is, everybody's going to do it. But the high call is for the high, uh, the servant, uh, the children of God. God is a high and lifted up God. And so he's calling us higher and it's a high call. It's not a low call. So anything that is easy, is not even worth having. So no, God never told us it's going to be easy to turn the other cheek and go the extra mile. No, God never told us that being separated and set apart was going to be easy. But I'm telling you that if we do it the Lord's way, it would be well worth it. Amen. And so we're going to go with God and God is going to go with us. Amen. And so when Elijah's servant told him, there is a little bitty hand the size of a, a, a cloud, the size of a man's hand. And he said, Ahab said, go and tell, uh, Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, go and tell him to prepare his chariot and go down that the rain will not stop him. You know, uh, what God is doing in this hour, we have to prepare. Elijah knew that this type of rain that needed to come and, and, and replenish the earth that was in a drought, it was going to be a lot. And, you know, we believe God for the overflow and the increase. We say, God, give me back everything that the enemy stole from me. And yet we don't prepare for it. Elijah is telling him, you're going to want to go home. You're going to want to be shut in because it's going to look like the flood is happening. Aren't you glad about it? That God has a way of restoring everything that the devil has taken, but we have to go and prepare. Do you believe God for what you're praying for? All this time, they were believing God for the rain, and yet they have to prepare when God is sending the release. I'm here today to tell you that there is a release. God said that this is a season of an open heaven. And if you want to partake in the things of God, there is a way that you have to position yourself, prepare yourself to receive what God has in store for you. Aren't you excited about that? Amen. Verse number 45, it says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile, you, you know, you ever notice that when God is about to do something, it has to come to pass. It, it, you know, we have all kinds of days, but it's those days when God say it will come to pass. That is the day that you're looking for. 
if you are in your now or in the season of waiting, you have to just wait for the day that says it comes to pass. You know, the Bible says it shall come to pass. This day will eventually come. He say, though the vision tarries, he say what? Wait on it. Why? Because it shall come to pass. So are you right now in a season where you don't see it happening? Well, I'm here today to tell you that it shall come come to pass. And so the Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and winds, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded himself with uh, girded up his loins, and he ran ahead or before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The power and the anointing was so heavy on Elijah that he was able to outrun the chariots that Ahab was in. Let me just say this, as servants of God and as children of the Most High, we are the head and we're not the tail. We should show up and show out because greater is he that is in us. We should never be lagging behind. We should never be the one that is sad and downtrodden because the answer is on the inside of us. Ahab needed Elijah. The people of God was looking in this story for the king or the government to give them the answer, but the answer was not in the government. The answer was not in the economy. But the answer was with the almighty God and you and the servants of God are representing God. And so if you act like you don't know what's going on, if you are lagging behind and you can't outrun um, those that are in the world, then you do not have the answer. But Elijah was with God and God, the Bible said, empowered him. Watch this. And the hand of the Lord and the hand of the Lord. You know what we're missing? The hand of the Lord. If we're going to be the head and not the tail, we're going to have to have the hand of the Lord. It says the hand of the Lord was with Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before a hab to the entrance of Jezreel. I need you to understand that we need to find favor with God and with man. Favor with God and God will give us favor with man. I want you to know that the hand of the Lord is present and is always waiting for to be with you. But you have to wait in God's presence for the hand of the Lord to be upon you. So it came to pass that the heavens was black and the clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain. You know, whenever uh, God is getting ready to do something, he will perform what he's going to do. But sometimes before it gets better, it will look like it's getting ready to be worse. But Elijah wasn't afraid because the heavens was black and there was full of clouds and the wind was going all, all over. All of this, this is a sign that God is about to move in your situation. He knew that this was a sign of the rain. You know, when we see all of the signs uh, before the summer comes, the Bible says we see the fig tree and we know that the summer is coming. And when we see all of these signs that is coming in the earth, we know that the coming of the Lord is at hand. I want you to know that symbolizing God's blessing upon your life the enemy will always try to make things look real bad before the rain begins to pour. But that is symbolic that you are in a season where God is about to do something in your life. There was a story in the Bible that Jesus was healing this boy and command the spirit to come out. He had epilepsy or something like that. And before before the boy got completely delivered, the Bible said he fell on the earth and he looked like he was dead. But the people say, oh my God, he's dead. And Jesus say, he's not dead. And he raised them up and the boy was not 
dead. But before that boy fell on the earth, he began to convulse. And, 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 and things got worse before it got better. So before it began to rain, there was clouds. Before it began to rain in this story, there was winds. So if you want to see the power of God, you cannot be afraid of the wind. If you are wanting to see the move of God in your life, you cannot be afraid of the clouds and the wind and the black skies. Because re remember, this is symbolic that God is about to do something in your life. And so the Bible says, and there was rain. No, he didn't say that. He said there was great rain. We are in a season and a time that we need it to rain like it never rained before. Father, we are asking you to send great rain in this earth. We need a great move of God. Are you praying for great rain, a great move of God? Well, I hope you are because God is going to give you the desires of your heart. And it is the will of the Father to bless his children. Guys, this is the end of this story or it, uh, of this message and this, this uh, text. I hope and pray that you enjoyed the series, Where is the Water? The presence of the Lord is here. And we are going to see the mighty move of God in this nation, in this earth, and in this city. So I pray to God that you were blessed by this ministry and this word. If you were blessed, please sow back into this ministry. The links are on the screen. Also, you can go to our website and sow and help us to carry the gospel. But with that being said, I want to take the time to pray for someone that is don't know Jesus. If you're out there, I want you to pray this prayer. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can accept him in your heart today. Say, Lord, I come before you. I'm a sinner and I am in need of a Savior. I know that you came in the earth to die for me as the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living uh, Lord, the Son of the living God. And I know that you, you, you died and you was buried. And on the third day, you made intercession. You rose again and now you're making intercession for me. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin and write my name on your Lamb's book of life. I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you love me. And if you prayed that prayer today, my friend, you are born again. Make sure you get baptized in the name of Jesus. Let someone know the Bible say you become an overcomer by the word of the, your testimony and the blood of the lamb. When you let someone know that you gave your life to Jesus, you become that overcomer and you win uh, above the enemy. Well, guys, this is all I have for you. I'll see you all on our very next broadcast. Please meet us. Or Hi, I'm Catherine Price with the Fueling Station Ministries, and I'm here to ask you for help in what God is doing. You know, the Bible says that the gospel has to be preached all over the world, and then the end would come. The fueling station is going into the homes of the people six days a week, and we cannot do it without your help. If you care about the integrity of God's word and promoting the kingdom in these last days, then we ask you to prayerfully consider partnering with this ministry. You can do so by going to our website at kpriceministries.com, or you can check out the links on the screen. Thank you for your support and may God bless you.